Thank you very much, David. We've received a number of questions. You mentioned the ferryman at the Fort St George, Walter Pawley, and he had an unblemished 40 years of service without an accident. But I understand there were accidents with other ferries across the CAM, for example, at the, the plough in Fenditton, which you mentioned earlier in the presentation. Can you explain more to the audience about when and what happened? Yes. So as I understand the ferries, they were basically safe. If you stepped on to them and off them when he was at the bank, the the accident with the ferry that is often mentioned in books is with the the plough ferry or the red grinders as it was known, and that happened in 1905. And I gather the situation was after the rowing races. The ferry there was fully loaded with people wanting to go from the Chesterton Bank over to the uh, the Plough Pub, and the ferry had left the bank probably by two three feet, and two students wanted to get onto the ferry. Uh, students being young and capable of uh, the, the long jump, they jumped onto the ferry. But their extra weight and their landing on it caused the ferry to capsize. Presumably most of the people could uh, look after themselves in water, but there were three young women who drowned. So that was sad. Interestingly, uh, also I've been looking at uh, some of the reports in papers, the, the Cambridge papers of the time. And I found a report again in uh, 1904, I think. And this was to do with the Cutter Ferry. And the report is of an inquest when a man was found uh, drowned in the river at the Cutter Ferry, he got tied up with the chains in the ferry. The report doesn't explain how that happened, probably because nobody was there at night to, to witness him. But it, interestingly, the report in the paper goes on saying that uh, some of the jury were saying to the paper, the Fort St George ferry has a gas street lamp on both banks. Well, surely we can find the resources to put a gas lamp at the Cutter Ferry. And as you saw in the picture there, I pointed that out. So that's interesting to see that that was a real problem. Bear in mind that in 1900, that's um, well before the time of electric lights. So dark then would be dark. OK, thank you very much, uh, David. There's a number of questions that have actually just come in on the chat. Um, may or may not be possible to answer them now. Um, I'll fire one over to David. Um, we're doing a socially distanced uh, Q&A here. Um, um, were ferries owned or in some way subsidised by the pubs? Were ferries owned or subsidised by the pub? A good question and I think there may be several answers. I don't have definite answers of who owned what when and perhaps the situation changed over the centuries. As I mentioned, I think for the uh, Fort St George, the ferry was created to get the drinkers to their drink. Now, as the place became more urbanised and there were more travellers for work, um, I don't know if the ferries became more of, of a commercial setup. What I've not managed to find out is presumably the cost of manufacturing a ferry, actually building it, 
would be perhaps a hundred pounds in the currency of the time. Who put up that money? I've not found that out yet. And are any of the ferries preserved anywhere in museums? Are any of the ferries preserved in museums? Not as far as I know. Now it may be further downstream somewhere that there's a replica still in use. It wouldn't surprise me. Now there are still uh, ferries of some sort in some places. Recently I was on holiday in the um, Isle of Wight uh, and at the top of the Isle of Wight there is the cows. Uh, cows is on both sides of the river and there is a chain ferry keeps chugging backwards and forwards. Today that is a metal boat, well nearly a ship that you can, well you can load 20, 30 cars on it. So it's a, a, a full size you know, power driven ferry. Is there a wooden ferry preserved anywhere? Not as far as I know. Okay, thank you, David. I covered the stretch of the river from Fenditton through to um, what became Victoria um, Bridge, and you talked about the influence of the medieval fairs. Um, is there any evidence of ferries operating to the west of Magdalen Bridge, um, perhaps you know, in earlier times before some of the collegiate bridges were, were built? Okay, so we're talking about uh, upstream from Magdalen Bridge. What I'm thinking is that the river would have been more well, narrower and a bit shallower. Um, when did the colleges start taking over the riverbanks? Um, 1300, 1400, and presumably that they would have kept quite a close eye on the whoever was on the river. I've not heard of any public payment ferries anywhere up there. Now I'm also thinking that there was the King's Mill and Bishop's Mill um, on Cofen to the Mill Pub and Mill Lane just um, just above Silver Street. The oldie worldy bridge there, there is a picture available where that was the King's Mill, as in a water mill, and the Bishop's water mill for grinding grain into flour. A big brick built building. So I'm thinking that there was a bridge basically across the river there. So I'm thinking that there wasn't really the need for any sort of ferry be between Magdalene Bridge and the King's Mill. Um, well, I'm also thinking that um, at, that, at that time Newnham village was very small, so perhaps there wasn't much need to cross the river at that point. Lots of questions about pubs. <laughs> Do we know if the pubs saw an uplift in trade after the bridges were opened as, as they became more accessible? Or how, how would you even be able to find out the answer oh. to that question? <laughs> Did the pubs see an uplift in trade after the bridges were constructed. I don't have any uh, data on their sales figures. Hmm. An interesting piece of research perhaps. Um, yeah. Do we know what happened to all the ferrymen when their work was replaced? Bridges. What happened to the ferrymen when they were no longer needed? Questions in one. Did the ferries, ferries get compensated when the bridges were built to replace them? And did the ferries get compensated when the bridges were built? I don't know, but I'm putting two and two together. Walter Pawley was saying that he would served on the ferry for 40 years. So it sounds like he was rather at retirement age. Now the question arises in 1930, shall we call it, what did they do for a pension? Were the ferry owners or somebody compensated? I don't know um, if any, um, one has knowledge of council masses. Were the council even harder up on money then than they are today? Uh, might be an avenue for trying to find an answer.
and then a further follow-up question about I think the interest in the map that showed the Fort St George as as an island. More information about the Fort St George being on an island. The Cambridge um, collection, I would guess, will have uh, maps going back to many years. This is something I want to research myself. I'd like to put together a talk on the CAM. So if anybody has pictures, information, uh, please get in touch with just as a local history group at yahoo.co.uk. That's just as a local history group, all, all one word. And that's something I'd like to find out more about. Uh, as far as I know, the island would have or the, the waterway that made the island on what we know as the common side, presumably that would have been filled in or was disused when they rearranged the, the lock system. OK, um, thanks very much for all the questions that have been submitted. Um, I don't know if there are any other topics, David, that you wanted to just cover now. Otherwise, we'll ensure that all the question answer is posted on the Museum of Technology's website together with the replay. I've got one question here which I think uh, raises an interesting point. Uh, what were the benefits of the construction of the bridges versus the ferries? And what I'm thinking is that uh, they were in a similar situation back in 1920 to the situation we are in today. Today, to cross the CAM, we have lots of choices. And I'm thinking, although we have lots of choices, we are choosing to spend millions of pounds and build a new bridge, uh, as in the Chisholm Trail, which I think will be a very pleasant cycle route. And that will give us benefits, uh, a new route shall we say, between the two railway stations through some pleasant green land. And that will speed up life a bit, which will make it a bit safer. And I think probably in the 1920s they were thinking, yes, we've got lots more people commuting across the river. Um, how can we speed that up? And uh, as we've seen, uh, there were some problems uh, safety with the ferries. So if you go to the expense of building the bridge, you get a, a safer crossing of the river and a more pleasant one. Thank you very much, David. Well, on that note, um, I'd like to uh, thank David once again for his webinar and Q&A. Um, give him a virtual round of applause. It won't be one uh, hand clapping, but uh, I'm sure you can join in um, online. And thanks very much. Look out for more information about forthcoming webinars from Cambridge Museum of Technology. Thank you.